the new M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Max MacBook Pros are here. And I've got one to check out. But are any of these worth upgrading to? This is what you need to know. Before we dive into this thing, if you want to keep up to date with everything Apple, consider hitting that subscribe button. From the outside, the new M4 MacBook Pros look basically the same. Apple didn't deviate from the successful formula of the prior generations. The port layout is the same, with a MagSafe 3 port on the left, settled by two Thunderbolt ports, and a headphone jack. On the right-hand side, you'll see the HDMI port, an SD XC card reader, and one more Thunderbolt port. The new MacBook Pros do use Thunderbolt 5, which is something I'm very excited about. It's been a long time coming since I saw the first docs debut as prototypes at CES 2024. I've been playing around with this new one here from Kensington, but more from Hyper, OWC, and others have already been announced. Even though there aren't very many Thunderbolt 5 accessories on the market right now, we're going to see a bunch of these within the next year or so. It's a huge jump in bandwidth, up to 120 gigabits per second, which is up to three times the speed of Thunderbolt 3 and 4. We also have to talk about this new display. I'll be the first to say I have hated anti-glare displays on laptops. I've used a lot of PCs and they always lost so much sharpness. They never felt very bright or vivid. Like they, it was like way too dull looking. It seems Apple basically waited for this new nano etching method before they dare introduce an anti-glare screen on the Mac. So far, I love it. Like, holy smokes do I love it. It goes edge to edge, unlike with the iPad Pro that has that glossy border on there. When I take it outside, you can see the drastic difference it makes, but it also even makes a big difference inside when there are a lot of lights, whether I'm here in the studio, upstairs, basically just anywhere. It's just more comfortable. You do have a very slight loss in your sharpness, but nothing major. Even editing photos, I've got no problems with this nano etched matte finish. I'll also say, it does seem like it stays cleaner too. I swear, I don't ever touch my display, but there are always like little specks that, that pop up on my old display. I've got a toddler, he's running around, so he probably plays a part in that, but the matte one seems like it doesn't show things as much. I like this so much, I'd argue for some mobile pros, this display could be well enough reason to upgrade on its own. Let me know in the comments that if you did pick one of these up, would you go nano etch texture one or straight up glossy? Since we're talking new Macs, it's probably a good time to talk about my sponsor for this video, which I connect with at my core. I have always been someone who upgrades my Mac every couple years. I spent time in web and app development before moving into graphic design and then into video production. So I would upgrade and sell my Mac every couple of years to keep up with my work. But it's, it's kind of a hassle and it gets kind of expensive. Funny enough, it's basically that exact situation that led to the founding of Upgraded, the service where you can get a new MacBook Air or MacBook Pro every two years. You just pick your Mac, an entry-level Air, a tricked-out 16-inch MacBook Pro, or something in between. You then get the Mac along with Apple Care Plus with payments split over 36 months. After 24 payments, you can upgrade to a new Mac or just keep rolling with the one you have as long as you'd like. It is easy, stress-free, and you're always upgraded. If you're fond of using Apple's latest portable Macs, like these new M4 MacBook Pros, subscribe and get a new one every two years with the added peace of mind of Apple Care Plus. Prices for MacBooks start at $36.06 per month with 0% APR for well-qualified buyers. Learn more about upgraded at the link in the description and pinned in the comments. So at the top of the new display is an upgraded camera. It's similar to what we've got on the new iMac. It's a 12 megapixel camera that still records only at 1080p, but is supposed to look better and supports both center stage and desk view. Center stage is where the camera zooms in on you as you move around, it'll follow you. It's handy for if you're sitting at your desk, you lean back in a chair or you move around a little bit as you're talking, let alone if you were walking around and giving a presentation while on a video call. Desk view is super handy. 
This is something else you could do before, but for this, you needed your iPhone. So I would pair my iPhone, connect it to the top of my Mac, and I would use the ultra wide camera on my iPhone to show my hands demoing or even sketching something. I've used this a number of times and honestly, it's just nice to have that built in instead of requiring a second device to do it. But pretend you don't use either of those features. You're not worried about center stage. You're not worried about desk view. It also looks much better. I was very impressed with how much better the video looked. My old M3 Max MacBook Pro had very faded and washed out colors. Now everything looks warmer, richer, and overall better. It's very much appreciated. I'm not sure if all the credit here goes to the upgraded resolution of the camera or a new ISP inside of the M4 chips, but it's better. As I mentioned, you can get the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the base M4 or M4 Pro, and you can get both the 14 and the 16 inch with the M4 Pro or M4 Max. Here, I have the M4 Max with one terabyte of storage and 64 gigs of memory. In my opinion, there doesn't always need to be a massive performance jump with yearly upgrades. Not many people are going from an M3 to an M4 series chip, so it doesn't have to like double their performance every time. The M4 Max is still a 16 core chip with 12 performance cores and four efficiency cores. It's now faster though, increasing the clock speed from 3.68 to 4.5 gigahertz. In terms of benchmarked performance, Geekbench 6 is showing me a 25% boost in the single core performance. That's actually a little bit better than Apple's promise of a 20% boost. Personally, I also saw a 30% increase in the multi-core performance. That's, that's very awesome. The metal graphic test was a little more modest, going to 189,752 from around 163,000. Roughly 15% increase there. What's crazy to me is that video editing is no longer a taxing workflow from these machines. I could pretty, I, I could probably get by with just an M4 or an M4 Pro doing my typical video editing. Like I could get a 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M4 Pro in there, be just fine for 80% of everything that I do. But now we're looking at these crazy AI applications or 3D rendering that are really pushing machines. The numbers and demos people have been sharing online of them testing the new M4 Max is insane. For example, it's worth noting how the M4 Max literally has a more powerful CPU than the M2 Ultra. Or look at this compare that Robbie Tilton put together. The M4 Max is comparable to a GeForce 4080 Super, which is a desktop graphics card that is massive. It's huge. Apple put that performance into like this tiny portable laptop that you can put into a backpack and it requires far less power at the same time. Mind you, Apple also doesn't have those obnoxious different kind of power modes where it just drops the performance when you're ever on battery life. It's not a thing. This one gets me excited for Apple's performance here on these machines, but also it gets me excited thinking about the upcoming M4 Ultra. Honestly, it may best the RTX 4090. It's nuts. So circling back to the original question of, should you upgrade? First things first, if you need a new machine, you need a new machine. I can confirm that at least so far, there are no issues here, no issues with these machines. This isn't a first gen product, so I'd argue any small bugs or issues that we had experienced with early models have been worked out and it is absolutely polished. If you are in the market right now, personally, I pick up an M4 version versus a older M3 version, particularly for the new display and Thunderbolt 5. I know a lot of people suggest buying like a last gen model on sale, but I really like those upgrades. Then it comes down to those who can potentially hold off for a little bit. Maybe you're curious about what the M5 model may look like. Here's what we know about the future roadmap of the MacBook Pro. From what I've heard, rumors say that the M5 model will be another minor spec bump. It'll get the M5, M5 Pro, and M5 Max chips. Otherwise, it's gonna look just like this. The only change I can imagine, otherwise is support for Wi-Fi 7. At that point, we'll also see a much higher adoption of, of Thunderbolt 5 as well. That will drop next year, 2025, 
Uh, but it won't be until 2026 that we get a redesigned model. It's supposed to be even thinner than this with an OLED display and the M6 processors. But two years is quite a while to wait. The way things are moving, if you upgrade it now, this machine will still hold a good value in two years. I'd say it's worth upgrading now and then moving to the redesign in two. But that's just me. Or maybe you want to try out upgraded. That'd be a perfect timeline there. Two years, go up to an M6 model like it's a full redesign. Also an option. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and what changes you'd like to see on future models. If you would like to pick one up, we have some deals that we've been finding online, so we've put those in the description as well. Otherwise, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.